repel, rebel, trust in what you hear, words, and even the sounds you remember, the mumble of strangers, a bus breaks glass, the speed of a train flying down a track for miles, your freedom. Be quiet. Resist the blues. Be the optic and bop, cacophone harmony, stir-fry soul food, swallow a saxophone, no sonnet to prove your eloquence, twist, braid, die, press, do-rag, run away, clear ice, pomade, slick rick, or don't, run, run to. Your block will get knocked, it's only a matter of when, or how and what speed it will come off. Despite throwing your hands in the air, waving as though you don't care, someone does, someone will. You will catch blow after blow and have to make sense. Expect what you see to vanish. Keep saving until your coins burst out of the jar. Stay thin, warm, fat, loose to wear what you wish. Confuse the state of the face that blacks you in, an eternal marker of place, mark, explode the scene. Niggery, black a lot, brown, high colonic. Example two, a memory. One of us opened fire up on this train in 1993, shooting whites. Black, splattering. Would you crouch? Will you return to stare back at this body caught volumizing in blood? Blood. In the hotel, there is a bathroom that smells like bleach. Down the hall is a room next to the bathroom which smells like crack, if this is what crack smells like. In this room, there is a big black fly on the bed. You're not certain if you remember the fly there, in that room, or in another bed in a different hotel altogether. In either case, the room is hot and small, and the fly latched to some surface is big and black as the blood is dark. You had no idea he was bleeding. If you knew, you would not have allowed him to take you to this hotel that you can barely remember. You think about saturation, and the way you lifted up the back of his shirt. The blood you recall is a thick lacquer on the back of his boxers, a slick red soak as though someone stabbed him up the ass. He did what anybody would do after such an attack. He bled. You knew something was wrong when you saw the small blood stain on the front of the shirt along its right bottom curve, the dry mark he pulled out of his pants after he must have tucked it in wet. When you saw the source, you said, oh my God, and yelled that there was absolutely no way you were going to do anything with him, but you don't want to remember that refusal. You want to remember when he said, you know by the eyes. Perhaps you agreed, yes, you're right, I knew by your eyes. You could have had him before even looking into them, eyes not longing but lost, not seductive but desperate. It was the way he peered out from around a row of others at the urinals, wide and owlish. It was his tortoise shell glasses along with the grade of his sweater that placed him from, say, Stamford. He is old and has white hair, which you think was blonde at some point, especially after seeing the stray hairs that shot out of the zipper of his wide well cords when he faked pissing to shake his dick at you. Despite his uncut, hardening penis that poked out of his pants, there was something else you remember, that he combed his hair against the curl, and how you looked up at him, picking the Labrador wife hair from his sweater like you loved him. He threw his coat on the hotel floor, but you do not remember the train tied to the floor where the coat lay. What you remember is walking down 42nd Street and putting his arm around you, feeling like you were his, and that from you he could have anything. A little blood on the shirt tells not that bad. <laughs> you may have thought, but when he pulled his pants down and you saw the bloody boxers, you stopped. Even though he said, it's only on the back, you can take care of the front. You pulled away, warned him about the dangers of hepatitis and HIV, lied when you kissed him on the cheek and said it was not his fault, even though you knew it was his fault to be so carelessly bloody. You cannot stop thinking about the blood in his pants while he waits on the platform for the train back to his home, his Labrador, his wife. You think that he may collapse, that he's bleeding like you imagine the dead to bleed when their bodies give up. You both know that you cannot control this and watch him enter the train a few cars ahead of you. Wound. You are not sure if it is quite joy when you see the wound. In fact, you haven't seen a stab wound up close like that since your junior year of high school when you walked over some kid who was knifed and would have carried him in his spine. See what happens when you try to come up to blood bank? You felt joy at seeing what came after that stab wound, about walking over his body, about leaving the school on the last day and seeing a boy tapping on the ground with a knife sticking out of his back. You did not think about what sense may have been severed from him as the blade split one disc from another. So tonight, when you saw this white man in glasses mid-thirties with an early gray mullet lift up his alpaca sweater to reveal a slit in his abs beneath the bloody curtain on his shirt, he said, welcome to Brooklyn. <laughs> 
Your only regret is that you wish the people looking at him were not all black, the only ones key to the drama. Yo, that's fucked up. You wish somehow that the people partying drunk on Fulton were not oblivious white girls, or were at least sobered up enough to pay attention to one of their own stabs. Once, on the same clock, in the middle of the day, there was a cornrow black dragged on a door a few yards from where this white was stabbed. This man had a similar audience, a bunch of other blacks watching him cuff, hog tied, and shot to inert with a taser. Are you still gonna fight? The cops pig pile, they knee as hard as they can into his back. Anyone would resist. It seems natural for any animal to fight and smash to the ground a 900,000 volt charge zapped into on Forrest's body, a stiff plane on the paddy wagon's floor. As you look into the ambulance of the white man, got it. Is what you feel joy seeing one man showing his wound and taken to safety while you remember another folded and loaded like living cargo off to jail? There's a dead pigeon smashed in the middle of the street with blood cruising down its leg. You remember someone spraying away blood on the sidewalk around the corner from your house where you heard gunfire through the night. In the morning, when you went looking, you learned that blood without a body, blood not washed away by water, coagulates before it dries into a thick, shiny gel. Toilet. You remember that his beard is thick and nappy. You say there was a certain kind of sexiness, both in his face and his decision to spread out on the toilet, the thick butt of his black dick in his hands, pants dropped around his ankles, waiting to suck anyone who came through. Red hot in that little shithole. At least the part of you thinks this. Another part of you thinks the urinal next to him is like a small boat, in it the sea of urine. Even when you piss and look over at his hungry brown lips, you won't feed him. Maybe a part of you wants to feed him, but you can't get over how sickening the floor is so concrete and TP anchored by a toilet and his black ass sitting on it, waiting for someone in the Sanson cinema to fill his mouth as he passes in and out. Thinking of him is enough to make you want to think about the mountains you drove through from the Atlantic Classic to Philadelphia where the rubble gave way to dirt off the highway, the hill sloped into exits, smokestacks, and statues in the periphery. What brings you back from the tennis is the smell, like steel dust shooting up your nostrils, filling you up enough to make you slip over your shirt, slip your shirt over your face. When you come in to take another piss, you are proud of yourself for getting inside. There was a line of people afraid to go in because the pot-stucking cocksucker is talking with another motherfucker about nothing at all. Turns out they're both vets, can you believe this? He's at Sarmi. He know better than this. I'm ex Navy, he tells you. People have their things, you import. <laughs> My dad was in the Navy too. <laughs> You're gonna get sick. When you say this, you want to lift him up and carry him out to some clean river to soak, watch the rings of filth float from his body, but you also want to piss on it. You imagine his face sprinkled with your vitamin bright urine. You want to unload on his beautiful black beard what you give to the urinal's mouth, a radiant stream splattering on his dim and tired lips. Will wine and cheese glut my art, kill my pock-blocking arms? Will it decrew my continents, make me a better black? Had this been the rat poison under my stove, I would have left it alone. Had this been Lupia, on seat of food song, you'd give me an island. If I leapt into the arms of the first white suit and broad chest I saw, I might sink. This last and desperate arc by spine is no nigger dance, no black, so blessed be I spin. My back bores into the floor, I tear out my song, now yours. In the twist of flex, the chin follows the Egyptian hand's whip around. <laughs> Shackles snap, the torso torques, scent breaks. Do not utter a corner, watch the spot. A head looks out, the body's form. It is not left out a rogue, burnt, a burner, tag it, see sight. My house has a blue minivan and a red porch in the garage, a porch and yard. I'm wide and fat, my endless reproach, palm between oil stains on cardboard. Has it broke yet? Do my arms stink? Do I flame amazement? Do I not creep here, my head shaking in the city where body lock tick? The towers crash into a hole, I do a 1990, break the black body, uprock, break the brown skin. We don't need no water, let this newish thing. <laughs>